time to do this topic which is transport phenomena and I think it's one of the most interesting I think subjects but it's also very hard and very complex and very let's say typically you're not going to calculate it by yourself you're going to need help of a software or anything because it is very difficult why because we're talking about interactions of either temperature velocity temperature velocity and mass transfer or concentrations with respect of distance and when it's one direction it's fine maybe this for instance goes from left to right it's easy but when you get to a two-dimensional analysis let's say we have this, this is a pipe so probably you also know that it goes like this will start getting a little bit more complex and three-dimensional well that's the most complex one because let's say you want to model this nose and the eyes and the forehead well first off calculating this geometry will be very hard secondly understanding how the interaction goes on each uh, let's say area because this is a volume depends on how you model it maybe you even can model it as a sphere you are willing to get more specific you can start modeling like forehead nose eyes cheeks lips and so on so eventually what you want is to model temperature across the forehead or maybe this fun fact you know that get humans will have a lot of heat in the head I don't remember how much percentage but maybe I was about 80% goes through the head and all the other 20 goes through our body so that's transport phenomena previously we were interested especially in thermodynamics and energy balance on how much energy is receiving or giving out this body and now we're interested in the space so more about here in the head or the flow and more specifically let's say let's say we're interested in we are having this pipe and you know guys that here is very fast and eventually it goes well same velocity but less pressure you're also interested in that model why does that happen why does pressure decreases this is all given in transport phenomena so what essentially uh, sorry what exactly do you see well we try to relate those phenomena once again temperature heat also essentially all the energies energies velocities viscosities uh, heat transfer coefficients and so on concentrations gradients and so on you want to relate them with respect of locations as I said to you before so typically you're going to see something very basic first off understand the dimensional analysis and very importantly a dimensional numbers or all those relationships that eventually you cancel all units and you have a dimensionless number you have no idea maybe you know this Reynolds number which is maybe thousand you have no units the good thing about this is that thousand or two thousand in a number of Reynolds I can go to a guy that uses the English system and it will be exactly the same this two thousand uh, Reynolds number for this English guy than for me or I, that I use the international system so this is given because we cancel units all the way because we have this ratio versus this ratio they cancel each other and this number let's say that it's pure or let's say uh, it's a very standardized number now which type of numbers you're going to see well I'm not going to get into specifics but each one of them has its number so momentum transport is about I think name implies momentum momentum is mass time velocity this is essentially what we're interested in. since mass is easy to get we can just wait it and so on we want to understand why does velocity changes you can relate this as kinetic energy and plenty of other relationships we're going to model a lot of fluid dynamics which is a very you could either use or analyze analyze this in a fluid dynamics course or you can do it here in transport phenomena since it is uh, let's say momentum transport heat transport and mass transport you're going to see maybe one month 
each one of them, which is not enough, but at least you know about fluid me mechanics modeling, understand viscosity, kinetic viscosity, dynamic viscosity, the famous continuity equation, which is very, very useful, what's shear stress, we're going to talk about velocity profiles, so for instance, in a pipe, we have these two models, this is the typical model, turbulent model, and we have the super plug, mo plug flow model, which is very, say, we ignore the friction in the boundaries here. We have linear flow, turbulent flow, understand why is it, why is it easier to model mo uh, laminar and turbulent flows. Reynolds number, which I already mentioned to you here before. Pipe flow, plug flow already I told you about. Now heat transport, as you can see, it's about heat and temperature, the relationships. We're going to talk about the means of uh, transport, conduction, convection, radiation. And we're going to talk about also insulation, how to increase or decrease insulation material. We see a lot of one direction heat transfer, as I told you, left to right or inside to outside in a radius. What else? We talk about the optimal radius for a pipe and its insulation. We talk about the logarith logarithmic mean trans uh, temperature right here or change. It's a change on temperatures we have when you, we use counter current and co current flows in heat exchangers mainly. We talk about the overall coefficient of a heat exchanger. We talk about the heat transfer coefficient of a tube heat transfer coefficient of the wall of the pipe and so on. So we talk about mainly tubes and means of transportation, how heat is transported and how temperature goes from left to right. Now mass transport, this one is very, very, very abstract and harder than these two ones here. So momentum and heat is very easy to understand, or at least I mean not easy, but it's more, let's say less complex. Mass transport is a little bit more complex. We talk about Fick's law. We talk about diffusion. We talk about the gradients or changing concentrations. And eventually, we are interested in the counter diffusion, accumulator, or exercises in which, so for example, you have this one right here. You, why does this go here? And why does yellow prefer going here? Or maybe, let's say, a mass transfer coefficient of oil versus water. Technically speaking, there is some water in the oil and there is some oil in the water. So that's what we are interested, especially in extraction or distillation. And why do we need this? Probably you're wondering. We will be able to model a lot of things. And when I say a lot, it's plenty of things. For starter, velocity profiling. If you are working maybe in something about cars, you probably know those tunnels, wind tunnels, so they hit tunnel, they want to know the aerodynamics, how those air helps or does not help this car to move, the pressure going up or down, etc. We are also interested in friction losses. As you can see, maybe the friction here goes too high, maybe the friction in the wheel versus the, let's say the street is high, it makes a lot of heat, which makes the heat this right here to expand and if it expands I don't know maybe it has another applications or maybe if you hit the nitrogen inside will not help okay you have plenty of uh, applications now we're also interested in temperature gradients as I told you before we're interested why do we have a lot of heat right here and not right here or why is it here well of course here is the friction because we have two uh, solid solids and we have here we have only solid air or solid gas. We talk about also insulation material, especially for pipes. It's very important because in a chemical plant you will have a small tube going through, but it's so hot, let's say maybe 200 Celsius. If you leave it like that, the environment will take away all that heat and will cool it down maybe to 50 Celsius. So you're losing energy just because you are not insulating that pipe. Also for separation processes, understand how flashing goes. So you have this right here, this is your liquid, and here goes your vapor phase. So how 
or why it makes a substance to remain in the liquid or go in the vapor section. Evaporation is also important. Why does it take heat? Like, let's say, for instance, sweat. You sweat, you are running, then you sweat. Well, why does it go up as vapor? And then distillation, well, you want to model maybe from trace. You had this trace. Why does vapor goes down? Sorry, liquid goes down and vapor goes up. And how do they interact in this level? And many other applications on mass transfer or mass separation, such as extraction, leaching, drying, and all those previously stated.